Hello Internet, Syriac here from Syriac Gaming Channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Game Explained series episode for Kerbal Space Program. And I want to focus on moon landings in particular, but landings in general. Um, well, get right down to it. This is the ship that I landed on the moon with in career mode. In stock, with stock parts. Now, I did not go to the moon first. I went to Minmus first as I find it easier. So if you don't have all of these parts unlocked, you don't need some of them on here. Um, I'm going to disassemble the ship and then load it again. Um, so let me save that quick. So I'm going to take it apart and just show you how the thing was built because to get to the moon, this is where you need to start. You need to have things in order here on the ground. So, first thing I'm going to do is take away those. That's just to stabilize it for because of how heavy it is on the, the launch pad. You don't want anything exploding, or maybe you do. But to get to the moon, you don't until you tell it to. So, I've got, let's go ahead and take them off. This is the first stage right here. Um, what I do with this ship is I, is I do not, um, I'll show you in a, in a minute or two here, but I do not, uh, throttle up when I first start. These, these four boosters are enough to, to get this thing off the ground. Uh, and if you don't have these large boosters, you can use the smaller ones. You're just not going to have them for as long yet. So, um, we'll get back to that. Now, if you look in here you'll see that I use the larger the decouplers because if I used a small one it would be too close to these these tanks here on the side so I wanted it to stick out a little bit so that when it when I decouple it and it breaks off it doesn't smash into the engine so I'm just gonna take those decouplers off for now so that was that was staged at number eight there by the way so once those break off or just before they do I will be turning on or turning up the throttle on all of these engines here to compensate for the fact that I'm about to lose those. So those pop and then these will just continue. Now you'll see I have this is called asparagus staging and the way to do that you can find on a lot of people's channels. I'm not going to get into the asparagus staging here but I have um, just two sets of it. So this first one will drop these two tanks, the second one will drop the second two tanks, and then you're just left with a central core few of uh, fuel. And you can see I had some struts here and they were just uh, bracing the solid rocket boosters, those large solid rocket boosters, so that when the thrust happens it doesn't pivot back towards my rocket it just stays pretty stable and you can also see at the base here because these are not going to be firing upon launch I didn't want them for the same reason being whipped in to hit the tanks down here because this is the pivot point it's the only point that's holding it so without those struts it would get pulled towards the center potentially explode alright so when, once this central part is done this stage here decouples it all and you're left with essentially the lander slash ship and again it's asparagus staged with some smaller tanks but uh, they all come on the LV I believe these are the LV 909 engines you get those you can get those fairly early yeah the LV 909 and these are particularly uh, good in the early part of the game for um, fuel consumption. They don't eat up too, too much of it, but they also don't have a ton of thrust, so hence five of them. So first, the two tanks go on on the sides, that side, that side, then that side, that side. And then the central tank will, would be left, and ideally you would have landed by now, but if not, um, you still have some fuel left in there 
and you don't have you don't have to have the science bay on here or however I got this rigged up top really all you need is um, is that plus you'd you'd want a uh, decoupler to take that off for re-entry if, if you do plan on returning which this ship does so let me reload okay so there it is I'm just gonna head straight over to the launch and we'll do this alright it's night time so I'm going to fast forward till day is out so you can see a little bit better here that's good enough now, I want to hit T to turn on the SAS, stabilize it, keep it from wobbling too much. I do not, with this, this one, I don't want to throttle up because if I was to pour all my energy in right now, yes, I'd go faster and yes, I'd get to uh, higher speeds quicker, but I'm in this thick part of the atmosphere. You don't want to do that. It's a waste of fuel. Um, as it is, this thing w is going to waste fuel, but... Um, it's just the solid rocket boosters and that's what they're meant for is to get you off the ground so I don't care as much so here we go so ideally now I also I forgot to mention that I do have a inline right there inline stabilizer and that helps to keep this thing from rocking all over the place too if the ship is too big, it will have some trouble with that. But you can see we're going up fairly steady. We are going, we're going to start uh, getting too fast for what our altitude actually is. Like I said, these these boosters are going to really push us beyond that 200 limit that you want to be at while still in the thick thickest parts of the atmosphere. And um, as has been fairly established with this game, you want to start your it's called a gravity turn at around 10,000 meters um, and you want to be doing about 200 to 220 max as you can see I'm about to overtake that pretty readily well before I reach that so right now I need to throttle up because I'm going to be staging drop off those heavy ex extra tanks I no longer need and I'm just going to continue burning pretty much upright for now and then around 10,000 I want to start nudging over a bit and then just reset my SAS to hold my position here and you can see I'm, I've just cleared the first part of the thick atmosphere so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to map view just open that up quick and I want to see where my apoapsis is so it says right now at if I was to just cut the engines, actually no, the atmosphere would slow me down, but the highest I'm going to reach on this trip is 22,000 meters at this point. So what I want to do here, what I like to do here, is I like to click orbit. The orbit should be, at this stage, should be somewhere around the 45 degree point, um, which is this circle that kind of runs around all the way. So what I want to do now is stage and then tip with this and just follow along the 90 and this is the 90 here on the nav ball and what that's going to do is make it so that I'm pretty much straight along the equator if I launch towards 90 if you launch towards 270 you'll go that way and that would be 0 or 360 and this is 180 so everything seems to be going fine I just want to check on my apoapsis it's all the way up to 53,000 now I'm past the 30,000 point I probably should have done this a little here but you wanna start to get some uh, lateral velocity going somewhere around the 30,000 point when you actually come out of that thickest part of the atmosphere you can start to do this where you tip over really far and um, 
reason being is you're no longer being pushed against as hard by the atmosphere. You're no longer pushing through the soupy atmosphere. And now you're basically in space at this point, um, furthest reaches of the atmosphere. So what I'm going to do, I want to burn slightly above the horizon. And what I mean by horizon is this line between the orange and the blue, that represents the horizon, the ground. Um, it just doesn't look like it right now because of the orientation of my ship. So what's happening here is the apoapsis is getting further from me and higher up. 70,000 is about where if you go any lower than that it might be a little too low but I'm just gonna burn some fuel here and you'll notice that the apoapsis is hovering around 45 Oop, I just heard my engine cut out, so I want to stage those away. You don't want to be carrying around the extra weight. Waste more fuel. So now you'll see that the apoapsis is ticking down. It's 35 seconds, 34 seconds, and so on. So what I can do is as I get close to it, about 30 seconds away, I can tip up slightly above the horizon. And it depends on how much power your engines have, honestly, if, and how much fuel you have. You can also do uh, inclination burns, but for now I'm just going to do what I find to be the simplest thing. I'm going to tip up a little more because I want to keep that apoapsis about the same distance from me as it, once it gets a little bit lower here. And the apoapsis is up to 73,000, which is good. And eventually these blue lines are going to extend to the point where they actually go around Kerbin, and then meet up on the other side and form what's going to be my periapsis. And now, keep in mind as you're as you're moving forward here, you see the apoapsis is sneaking away from me. So I'm going to tip down a little bit. You can also shut down or slow your engines, the throttle on your engines, to do, to uh, achieve that same same goal. But if, for instance, right here, I'm going to shut them down. You can see the periapsis is actually beginning there at 10,000. So we're at 74 on this side, 10,000 on the other. So what I'll do is I'll float a little bit closer to the apoapsis. And the apoapsis simply means the highest point of your your arc, your arc, your trajectory. So now we'll raise the periapsis and once they're opposite each other, that's about as about as even as you're going to get it. So 73 on that side, 76, that's close enough for, for what I want to do today. So we're going to zoom out on map view and I'm going to turn off some of this other stuff that's cluttering up things that I've been doing on this save. And you want to set the moon as your target. Uh, that will give you these ascending and descending nodes. And if you'll see it's minus 0.3 on this side and it's 0.3 on this side. What that means is you're not, you want to head as close as you can to zero. And the best way to do that, if, you, if you're w way off, is to go to where the, the node is and you want to pull up or down and see if you can get it to change. And I changed there, but it was very subtle. Let me see if I can do that again. That's too much. It's it's very touchy, as you can see. Just the slightest little burn has that much of an effect on it. And I mean, we could easily get to the moon with those strange little difference that I have going on right now but what I'm tr attempting to do here is have one show up that's close pretty close one show up on one side to the left there zero and zero so it would take 13.4 meters per second to of doing that maneuver to make it so that we are on the exact same plane as the moon so what I'm going to do first, since I chose Kerbin as a target instead of my ship, is I'm going to cycle through everything back to my lander here by hitting tab. And then I'm going to f speed up 
using time warp. Oh, by the way, if you have limited battery capacity and and not and no ability to uh, get more energy using solar panels or generators, make sure you turn your SAS off. Any lights off, that's going to be pulling some of your power. So, just going to head over to the maneuver here, and then we're going to move the ship around until I can actually find the blue reticule which is going to be the maneuver it should be I think this way yep yep now you remember I was saying that uh, 0 and 360 was up and 180 was down well it's got us burning 180 and which will burn downward and change the inclination so and to show you, once I get this close enough, I'll switch back and load extremely slowly, apparently. But there, you see it's pointed downward. So I got, it's not going to take long for this burn. So even though you want to burn about halfway through, meaning if you have a 10 second estimated burn, you want to start burning at 5 seconds prior to reaching the node. So here I'll just, and that'll use the least amount of fuel to accomplish what you want. And look at that, we're basically right where we want to be, I believe. We want to, you usually start burning towards the moon as soon as you can see it just over the horizon in order to, to go meet with it. And uh, looks to be accurate. And the maneuver is not not cooperating with me, so I'm just going to wing it and go down there and burn towards the moon. Because I'm fairly certain, yeah, that's that's where the moon that's where we want to be headed. So, oops, no, it isn't. <laughs> I just wasted some fuel, but okay. So I didn't see that that was the retrograde marker, and I should have. There it is. That's why the uh, marker's there. Okay, so... Make a little course correction there. Now we have passed where, that's why the, the blue marker's up here. We actually passed by where I set the original marker. So this is pretty much useless, so I'm gonna, just going to get rid of that at this point and burn towards my target. Now I would suggest doing this with the nodes so that you can set them up ahead of time, attempt to get that correct burn, but I'm just, I have RCS on this, I've got plenty of fuel, so what I'm going to do is just burn towards my target and then adjust it on the way so there's the target and I might I'm the ascending node is changing slightly because I'm one to one side or the other of of this axis which is fine so what will happen what you'll notice is this will get faster and faster it'll start to move out so what you can do is you can throttle down or cut the engine and then slowly move towards it what I'm just gonna do is something like this so I can get an idea of when it actually crosses the plane of where the moon is going to be and I'm gonna slow down and then hit X when I see that I have an encounter. Now this encounter, you'll notice it says no periapsis, it's because it's an encounter that's actually going to impact the moon. And I don't want to do, I don't want to impact the moon at this point. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my SAS again, because if you're, if you are worried about cons uh, the electrical consumption, you don't want that on if you can help it when, uh, when especially when you're time warping. You can use it f to hold steady while you're uh, while you're burning towards the target, but that's probably the extent of what you would want to use it for. So, it looked like I had a little bit of a wonky entry there. It looks like 
I'm coming. It's difficult to if, to see if it's completely accurate, but it looks like I'd be out in front of it, pull back around it, and then smack into the surface of it on that side. So it seems that if I were to go, well, let's try a couple different things. And if you have RCS, then you, I'll show you both ways that you can do this. You can either burn your engines very lightly and for brief moments towards your periapsis, or not your periapsis, I'm sorry, your, your markers, your... Um, prograde marker and your retrograde marker you can do either some similar to this and this would be the shift key and the X key you shift in order to uh, bring up your throttle slightly and you hit X to cancel out and turn off the engines so that doesn't appear to be doing much it's just no matter what I do it's it's putting me straight back into it with no periapsis on it so let me just keep burning here see if I can eventually get a periapsis there's one 83,000 now I'll show you what you can do with the RCS so let me hit R to turn on the RCS now if I hit H or N I believe are the keys for the H should burn towards it which is what I've been doing with the engines so I want to hit N to go backward and you'll see that the periapsis is getting lower 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 and I want to shoot for about 30,000 on my entry here um, when I get close enough and just to just to give you an idea and again I'll turn off the SAS and the RCS so that the resources aren't being used now as you as you get further away from and you reach what would have been your apoapsis if you hadn't encountered something you'll notice your orbit starts to slow down and slow down and slow down. Think of when you throw a ball in the air. When it reaches the top of its arc before it falls back down to you, that's when it's moving slowest. So it's the same thing. It's the top of the arc where you would have fallen back down to Kerbin. But instead, you met up with a different... something else that was exacting gravity on you. Now, you'll see that all that squiggly stuff you saw over there, it just went over there. And that's because this is continuing to move forward and we're going and we're only moving what, 367 meters per second compared to the 542 that it's moving, so it's going to catch up to us and then we'll get pulled into this uh, this orbit, which is pretty pretty good. It's along the equator. I do want to try to land on the sunny side of this and some of the people that have contacted me or um, a lot of people I've read uh, comments posted about um, they had trouble because they were attempting to land on the dark side and they just and we're, we're gonna cover a few of these things so what I want to do uh, if you have any science this would be now would be the time to do it high over the moon uh, because we're we are considered in the orbit of the moon even though we aren't in an, in an orbit at this point. If we did nothing we'd be slung around it and tossed right out of the Kerbin sphere of influence and off into, the, into a solar orbit which is kinda cool because you don't have to expend any more energy to do that so keep that in mind for when you're when you're a pro at this and you can do everything you can uh, use these gravity assists to toss your ship out into wider and wider orbits and there's planners that you can find online for that so alright we're getting close enough now where I can start thinking about pre-planning some of this and let me go ahead and give you guys the, the gorgeous look of the moon here and an idea of what it is we're we're trying to go see and I believe I don't yeah we're still high above the moon here so not not right at my periapsis but right before it, I'm gonna set a marker and I want to pull retrograde on that marker and you'll notice when that connects that means we are in a in a stable orbit uh, because there's no atmosphere on the moon it's not going to slow us down through an atmosphere each time we go around the moon we're going to uh, stay in this orbit so what I want to do is pull this down and you can 
if your engines aren't strong enough to do this all in one little push, as long as you've got a stable orbit, you can go ahead and wait till the next time you go get around to your periapsis, because burning at your periapsis is the most fuel efficient way to bring down this this total. But I believe we have enough. We're only burning up uh, 149.6 meters per second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to pull this down some and maybe move it over a little. And you'll notice the periapsis, because I'm slowing down prior to reaching it, the periapsis may start to move away from you and that means your highest, your lowest point is getting lower and you don't want that to hit too low because then you will come down low enough to maybe scrape, scrape the bottom of your ship <laughs> and you don't want to do that yet. So you want to burn off some of this excess speed if you're attempting to make an orbit here. There. That's probably good enough. It gets it down to about 30 each if you at that point. So we just move over to the again the blue reticule. Not retrograde. I mean, well it is retrograde this time, but And this ship is a, if I didn't have the, uh, it would just take a little bit longer without the, a little more struggling without the inline reaction wheel that I have on this. And once we ditch this outer tank, this tank was just meant to get us out here. It's not meant to land with. So I'm, at some point it's going to run out of fuel or I'm just going to ditch it because we don't need it. So what I'm going to do is fast forward and be careful with this. This always honestly freaks me out. Just watch your, your time here and remember that the closer you get to your periapsis here the faster you're going to be going. So this can also this can alter quickly if you're not paying attention. Here it should be fine. We're not going to be increasing to crazy speeds but you do see that it is increasing. So we got 47 seconds of time so I'm just going to speed that along. They estimate my time to be 25 seconds so I want my burn to be about 12 and a half, which would be right about now. I'm just, just going to make sure that I'm as close as I can get to the, the blue reticule without being too finicky about it. And don't be afraid to make corrections. If you see something's not going according to the plan, yep, just like that. Ran out of fuel in that stage. So I'm going to dump that, start up the next stage. And you can see this stage has a lot more oomph. There. That's a little too far, but good enough. So 32 and 29 are, is what it's going to be. So what I want to do, because we are now headed into the dark side of the moon, is basically I want to do nothing. If you have any solar panels and things like that, and now's the time you want to catch as much solar power as you can. You're about to go to the dark side. You're going to lose your uh, your solar regen your solar generation. So um, also this might be close enough to be considered near the moon. Let me get a crew report. Yes, near the moon is at least at where I am at 29,000 meters, that's close enough to be near the moon. So if, if you're coming here for science or not not for a landing and you want to be near, then 30,000, 29,000 seems to, seems to be good enough for you. So what I want to do, and now you can lower this further, and that's probably what I'm going to do here. If you, if you try to lower your orbit from too high up. You can see this ship turns a lot better now. Even with the SAS on I can turn it. And it's because I don't have that huge tank on the back anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my periapsis down some more. Probably down to about 13,000. Yeah, close enough. And that killed off some of my speed, and I probably could have lowered the apoapsis a little bit more while I was on the other side. But you can get it down even further. If you were, if I were to come all the way over here to 12,000, burn, I could bring this apoapsis down to maybe 15. 15 is probably a little bit safer, um, just so that you don't hit anything. I'm not sure if there's any mountains or craters 
that are high enough to actually hit you at that height, but the lower you can get this, the less you're going to need to burn in order to slow yourself down enough to land. So, what I want to do, let's say, let's say we wanted to see this crater over here, um, or if you want to pick a particular landing site with accuracy, you can add a maneuver and then see how much delta V it's going to cost you to, to land at an exact spot like that. And just keep in mind, um, if you want to go in for a lazy slow maneuver and then tip at the last second, it's going to cost you less. But you are going to pick up speed as gravity pulls you towards the moon. Just remember that whatever delta V you're seeing there is not what's going to be used for the total landing. It's going to be just for this maneuver and then in addition anything for the landing so if you don't have enough fuel to even accomplish the delta V then sorry you don't have enough fuel to land either you have enough fuel to go smack into it <laughs> and you can maybe go on EVA, EVA on the way down I don't know but what I'm gonna do right now is just show you how how to basically how to wing it how this way, the way I'm about to show you uses more fuel than if you were to burn steady towards your retrograde. And what I'll show you what I mean by that. This works really well on places that have low gravity, like Minmus and Gilly. Um, and I find that I had to. I used this technique when I first went to Minmus when I was first trying to learn how to land in this game and I practiced it a bunch of times at Minmus and then I tried to do it here because I kept smacking into the moon no matter what I did so what I'm gonna do is I'm burning right now I'm burning retrograde and I just with my SAS on and you'll see that my apoapsis is dropping I'm actually gonna switch this to, to my surface speed instead of orbit now what you'll see is this reticule here is gonna start to climb on me and that's fine. I'm going to keep it here at the horizon. And you'll see that the reticule is going to climb up and up. And I'm just going to follow it so I can see where it is. And then stop it when it gets close to the top there. Now what that is, is means I'm falling rel almost straight down. Relatively straight down at this point. And I'm only falling from, what was it, uh, 19,000? So... As you can see, if I had if I had done that, like I was talking about at my periapsis, where it's 13,000, 10,000, then I'm only going to be falling for those 10,000 meters. I think I said feet earlier. We're not talking about the. Uh, not talking about that now. It's, it's meters. Okay, so uh, looks like I've got an, I've got plenty of fuel, but uh, it looks like I might run out of fuel in these, and I don't want to. Um, I don't want to detach them once I've got my landing gear out I'm not sure that they have enough clearance to be released so now what you'll see is the gravity of the moon is increasing our speed if you have the fuel and you're worried and like like I was every single time I came here you can burn off a little bit but you are wasting that fuel if because you're gonna you're gonna keep picking up speed you can keep it to a, a manageable level by doing short burns but if you slow yourself down too much you're going to be doing 30 meters per second the whole way down you're going to use a lot of fuel so what I want to do is open up my landing gear here and if you're you don't necessarily need the landing gear you can land on your nose cone if you're good enough at that but if you're new to attempting this then go ahead and try using the gear and um, again if you missed your chance to do your space your near science now's your chance also I believe um, if you do crew reports you'll get uh, maybe it's EVA reports if you do EVA reports you get uh, biome related EVA reports now if you have um, ground scatter on you'll notice that that will load when you get closer there's also another way you can go to IVA mode and you can see the, these two dials here, the radar altitude and the dial above it. Is You'll notice that when we get to about 
I'm going to burn while I'm in here just to kill off some of that speed. There we go. The radar altitude, once you get below 3,000, it's going to start winding down towards zero. And that means you're 3,000 meters or less from hitting the surface. No matter what no matter what this says, that's what you want to go by is your radar. And you can start to see ground scatter down there. So I'm going to slow down some. That means I'm, I'm close enough for the game to actually load that. So... If you have sunlight, you're going to eventually see... Where is the sun? I won't spend too much time looking for it. There, it's directly above me, so... I'm just going to burn off some of the excess. And actually, I'm going to get rid of these. Yeah, see what I meant? meant? That tank did catch on that. Now... That debris is actually helpful. It'll tell you how far you are from the surface, too, if you're paying attention to it. 200 meters down. 300. Okay, so about 300 meters down from where we are is the ground. So you want to slow yourself down, but not... And when you get close to the surface, it's probably not a good idea to do what I'm doing here and just burn constantly. You want to do it in short bursts. Now, this is not the most efficient way to land on, on the moon. This is just, I want to land on the moon, and <laughs> this is how I did it. So, you want to slow yourself down some, and keep in mind that, see that right there? If you, if you start to panic about getting close to the ground like that, sometimes you'll just mash buttons. Oops, need to turn off the... Uh... Sometimes you may mash the acceleration because you're getting too close. I do that, I've done that quite a bit. Um, something you can do to avoid that is to tap it and then just shift X, shift X, where and um, just burn off the excess where needed. But here we are, <laughs> we're on the moon. Um, so you can hop out with your Kerbals and apparently he got afraid and saw his shadow. There's gonna be six more weeks of space travel and then we can do the ceremonial falling landing on face Whee! alright so this has been a game explained episode from Syriac Gaming and uh... Hope, you, hope this helped if you have any questions please send them to me uh, I can be reached at Syriac Gaming channel YouTube. You can also reach me Gaming at gmail.com and I also have a Google Plus account and Twitch so if you need to get a hold of me you can. And as always have fun out there guys.